So there are a few different categories of acrylic paints. The most commonly known are heavy body. And so I have some Sennelier, some Liquitex, some Winsor Newton. These generally come in tubes and they're the consistency of oil paint. So they were designed to be sort of an imitation of oil paint. Well, as acrylics have developed, they've realized they can do a lot more with them if they have these different fluidities or viscosities is the technical term. So now you also have available to you soft body, um, fluid, and ink in acrylics. And then lastly, we have student grade. And I'm gonna talk about what the difference is with student grade and when you might wanna choose a student grade over a professional grade. Okay, so one of the benefits of an ink is that you can actually use it with a dip pen and draw with it, and you can draw with that on paper or on canvas, just like you would any other kind of pen and ink technique. You can do cross hatching and so forth. The other thing is it can be used like a watercolor on watercolor paper to get washes and a fluid consistency. And it doesn't lift, so if you've been bothered by that in watercolor where if you lay some watercolor down and then when it dries, it still can lift up. This, once it dries, it stays and it's permanent. Um, it also, the, the ink is good for mixing in with mediums where you want a really fluid consistency like a glazing medium or a pouring medium. You may have seen me do that in some of my other videos. I like it because it's really fluid. Most of the colors are pretty transparent and have a watercolor-like consistency and I really like that. So that's what ink is for. Okay, so showing you the ink. Now the ink um, is different. The acrylic ink is different from most drawing inks in that it's pigment-based. There's actually pigment particles in it. So um, it will be more light fast, light fast, meaning less likely to fade because of the pigment rather than the dye based. Some inks are, the coloring is dye. And you can, what I like about it is it, it's just a very fluid, heavily pigmented effect on canvas. So you can get that watercolor-like consistency on a canvas. Remember, if you watch my other video, which we'll link here, that you're not supposed to add more than 50% water to your acrylics. Keep that in mind. So if you really want this really thin, washy consistency, it's better to start with the correct paint. Some other things you can do with it is it's pre-filtered to go through an airbrush, so the particles are really, really fine in the ink. Um, you can use it to tint photographs rubber stamping, fabric painting, things like that, it's good for. Again, it's very permanent because once it dries, it doesn't lift off, it's, that's why it's good for fabric painting. And one little tip to know is that when you first um, get them, the color pigments will have settled to the bottom, so you just wanna gently shake them. You don't shake them vigorously to get the particles to be suspended in the acrylic polymer. The reason you don't shake them vigorously is because it can create bubbles and then you might have those bubbles in your painting if you don't want them. So just shake them gently to get started. Okay, so this is the same color, phthalo green, and this is in the soft body consistency. So I'll squirt a little bit out on the palette so you can see the consistency of it. So it's definitely thicker kind of creamy consistency. So this is good for when you want large flat areas without a lot of brush stroke. I'm gonna show you with my soft bristle brush. I know if you're doing color charts, if you're doing any kind of craft projects where you're just trying to cover an area, this is, this is your best option because you can get a smooth, even level application more easily with this paint. Now I'm using a transparent color so it's not completely opaque, but with opaque colors you'd have full coverage. As far as getting texture with a brush stroke, I'm using 
now a bristle brush because it gives better texture or brush stroke retention. There'll be less texture than in the heavy body. So we'll do the comparison next with the heavy body. All right, so now we're gonna try the heavy body um, and you'll be able to see the difference between the heavy body and the soft body even when I first squeeze it out. So it's a thicker consistency. So it'll retain peaks and volume more easily. If you try and brush it out as we did with the, um, say you're trying to do a color chart or something smooth, you notice because it's thicker, um, we are getting more color coverage, but we're getting more texture in it. But if you do like texture, say like Van Gogh type of texture, um, again, using a bristle, a stiff bristle brush is the best way to get texture. These smooth brushes, these synthetic brushes are more for getting a smooth application of a glaze or paint. If you want texture, this will hold more of a brush stroke. So you see the difference between this and that, the same type of brush. So I'm thinking of impressionist paintings and all their brush stroke or um, Van Gogh I mentioned, anything where you see a lot of heavy brush work, this is the best paint for that. Okay, so now we're going to look at student grade colors. Student grade colors have less pigmentation than professional grade colors. So these are good for when you're trying to save money and um, intensity of pigment isn't that important to you. I'm going to show you as I squirt them out the difference. Unfortunately, what I was able to get today at the store is a little bit different shade. This is a yellow shade phthalo green and this is a blue shade phthalo green. And, but on the plus side, phthalo greens have a pretty strong tinting strength. But especially with this basics, I think this Winsor Newton Galleria looks a little more pigmented if you look at the, than the basics. If you look at those two, you can see the difference. We're gonna compare the basics. So let's put the basics over here. And it's a little less thick than the heavy body and a little thicker than the soft body in terms of viscosity, that's that fancy word again. So if you're trying to brush it out, this should brush out fairly well. And then if you're trying to get, I have to recycle my brush here. And the last thing, okay. So I'm gonna try and get brush stroke retention So I'm not, um, I'm not an advocate for always using professional grade. I think if you're getting started and you need to do a lot of paintings to get better at painting, I would rather see you use student grade paint on cardboard and just do hundreds of paintings than buy the professional grade that you can barely afford and you're doing all these little tiny, tight, careful paintings because you're so nervous about it spending money on your materials. So that's always been my philosophy as a teacher. I'd rather see you paint a lot. So if student grade is your best avenue to that, if your resources allow it, I would always go for the professional grade because you're going to get used to using a better paint right from the get-go. You're gonna get more coverage. If you're mixing with other colors, the color will go further. So it's up to you to decide that. That's really for you to determine what you can afford. Um, and but I just wanted you to know that there is a difference with the student grade. You're not getting the same amount of pigment in the paint when you buy the student grade. Okay, so to recap, these are your four basic viscosities that acrylic paint is available in. We have an ink-like viscosity. We have a soft body, which is also similar to a fluid. Fluid might be somewhere in between the ink and the soft body. The heavy body and the student grade. 
So the ink is the one that you'll use when you want a most watercolor-like look or when you want to use a pen and ink. You can actually draw in pen and ink right on top of any acrylic surface. So say you built up a really thick, heavy body area and you want to go in and draw, you can take the ink and that will adhere to that. If you try and thin out heavy body to an ink-like consistency, it will not adhere and also it will be very dilute color. So ink can give you some capabilities that none of these other can give you. <clears throat> it's also good, like I said, for airbrush, for um, certain craft projects, like painting on fabric and so forth. Now the soft body is the one we choose if we tend to like a more fluid consistency, more flat paint, think of um, Roy Lichtenstein or any of those other kind of pop art painters where they didn't want to show a lot of brush stroke. It will actually shrink to even less brush stroke. You see a little bit here, it's still wet here, but this will actually, as the water evaporates, the paint film shrinks slightly, so you'll see even less accentuated peaks. Heavy body is for the more traditional oil painting look. It gives you a thick, pasty look. It's great for mixing with gels. You can apply it with a palette knife. You can spread it out but you will get a little bit more brush stroke in the heavy body if you're trying to spread it out thin. It will hold a lot more brush stroke. That's also called brush stroke retention. It has better brush stroke retention. Student grade is for those on a budget who are not concerned about a highly pigmented color, who can get by with less pigment in, in order to do more painting. It's still, um, and the brands I use, the Winsor Newton Basics are still a good strong polymer base that will hold up over time so you don't have to worry about longevity. The pigments are the same as in the heavy body, soft body professional. It's just there's less of the pigment in the mixture and that's where the money is saved. So that's kind of an overview of these different types of paint. I hope this helps you to figure out what works best for your project.